And he says, nevertheless, I have this against you. It is not good if the Lord says he has something against you. That is not good. This is where the letter takes a turn, right? I have this against you. That you have left your first love. You have left your first love. The church of Ephesus, it may be in many of your Bibles, you know, when they put a title over sections. I've been, Heidi and I were talking about that the other day, how, man, sometimes those titles are so misleading, right? They, you read the title and then that changes the way you read the, the, the scripture below it because you thought, well, smart men have put this title here and they broke this up just, and so Ephesus is called the loveless church, the loveless church. I'm not sure that that's the way I would describe it. It seems to me that Ephesus has become an organization and is, is not the organism that Christ has called us to be. They've become mechanical, leaving the mystery behind. They've become mechanical. They're doing all the right things. And, you know, here's the thing. Is there love? Yeah, but maybe it's love for the wrong things. Maybe it's love for the wrong things. Maybe they love the religion of it. Maybe they just loved the labor of it. Maybe they just love to argue. You know, some churches, they hate evil, and, and that's true. But it seems like all they want to do are fight people about it. You know what I mean? It's like, that's not helping anyone. That's not making Jesus famous. That's not presenting his love. Now, I'm not talking about compromise, but should we be a combative church? You know, just walking around, seeing who we could pick a fight with? No. No. So who is our first love? Church, who is our first love? Jesus. Jesus. You've, you've left your first love. This church has continued on. And even using the name of Christ, they've continued on. But they're not doing it in and through and by and for Christ any longer. They've left their first love. Jesus is the head of of the church. He's the head because we're not an organization. We are a body. We are an organism. We are supposed to be alive and we follow our head. And, and they've left their head. They've left their head. When the head is missing, but the church keeps going, because of human effort, it is no longer an organism. It's an organization. You have lost the mystery. You have become mechanical. The, the mystery of the body of Christ, how we, from all different backgrounds, different upbringings, different, all kinds of differences, come together as one body, loving each other, serving one another, and doing it for the purpose of Christ and through Christ and for Christ, that's a mystery, people. That's a mystery. How does that happen? Only God can make something like that happen. It's through His Holy Spirit that is, His, His Holy Spirit has unity. And when His Holy Spirit is in us, we are unified. And then we need to endeavor to keep the unity, right? We need to rush towards unity. It's a mystery. And when Christ has been left behind, you lost that mystery. You've become mechanical. <laughs> At best, you're a cyborg. You're just mechanical. They left their first love. They've been operating without their head. I'm afraid there are a lot of churches doing this today. They, they are, they've adopted worldly practices. They run on pragmatism. If it works, that's what we'll do. 
Yeah, but what does Jesus want you to do? What does Jesus want you to do? I don't want to see a 12-step program that works every time. I want to know what Jesus wants us to do. Because sometimes Jesus tells you to do things that to you don't make any sense at all. You have a hard time figuring out, Lord, how are you going to make this work? But, but it brings him glory because you couldn't make it work. Only Jesus could make that work. I want to live in the mystery. I don't want to become mechanical. I want to be the organism that Christ has called us and established us to be. I don't want to become an organization. And I'll tell you, I'll fight against that. You know I will. <laughs> if it's not about Jesus... I mean really about Jesus, not just the name of Jesus, but the person, Jesus. If it's not about him, there is a major, major problem. If it's not about him, you've left your first love. We can be busy doing all the right things. We can be busy uh, with all the right programs. We can say all the right words, but we've left Jesus behind. That happens. That happens. I think this can be very subtle. And I think it could be very obvious. But either way, if G Jesus is not the purpose, Jesus is not the focus, love for him is not the motivation, and if those things are true, then we've left our first love. Then we've left our first love and we're just doing church. Instead of Jesus, we talk about how great the speaker is. We sing songs about Jesus, but we talk about how great the band is. We say we are doing it all for Jesus, but we give credit and acclamation to everything and everyone but him. Or, we complain about the speaker instead of making much about Jesus. We judge a church by the quality of the band instead of making a joyful noise unto the Lord. We work for appearance and peer approval instead of the love of Jesus. Two sides of the same thing, two extremes, both have left their first love. Christian, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's always been all about Jesus. It's for Him. It's by Him. It's through Him. It's unto Him. Jesus, Jesus tells us just before this in the last chapter, I am, he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. It is his story. It's his story. All of creation is for him. Your purpose is for Jesus. That's why you've been created. That's why you're here. As a Christian... Your job is to make him famous. Your job is to lift up his name. Your job is to make much about Jesus. It's not about the pastor. It's not about the worship leader. It's not about, you know, this guy did this or we've done all that. It's not about making our church really well known and everybody just thinks really highly of our church. It's about making Jesus known. It's about bringing glory to His name and anything less than that. Listen, you were going to hell and then Jesus showed up. You, you, were, you were headed for nothing good. And then Jesus. We can talk about a lot of things that are blessings in our lives, but what even compares to the love of Christ in your life. Nothing comes close to Jesus. How much is his name on our lips? 
How often do we just sit before Him and weep and thank Him for all that He has done? And how often are we walking around making much of Him to this community? Because it's about Jesus. And the thing is, the motivation isn't, I got you all riled up and you're feeling all convicted and the pastor did a good job of you know, convicting you. No, no, no. His love for you. It's love that's the motivation, Christian. Anything else is wrong. It's not a list of do's and don'ts. It's not a, man, I'm going to feel really guilty if I... No, no, no. I love you, Jesus, because you loved me first. Because you paid everything for me. Because you died on the cross for my sins. What do you want me to do? I'm yours. I'm in. That's the motivation. Oh, if I've been convicted this week, I've just been sitting before Jesus. Lord, let it be your love that motivates me for everything I do. Let me just love like you love. Lord, let me confess sin when sin is there. Let me just lay it down at your feet. I don't want anything to block my relationship with you. I don't want religion to, to keep me from you. I don't want rules and rake. I just want you, Jesus. I just want to love you. I just want to be close to you. I just want people to see you in my life. I want to make much of Jesus. And they left their first love. And I do think it can be very subtle and not so easy to detect. When you're doing all the right things and you have all the right faces on and you're wearing all the right clothes and you're saying all the right words, it's really hard to recognize that you've left your first love and that's this church of Ephesus. If we were to visit this church, we would have walked away saying, that church rocks. That church is on the right road. They're doing everything right. And Jesus says, I have this against you. You left your first love. I want the love of Christ to constrain me. I want love for Jesus to be my motivation and nothing else. Nothing else. 